Uh, thanks, uh, Simon and uh, uh, Greg. Uh, I'd like to um, just probably reiterate what Simon said about the uh, amount of change that's in the code uh, for, for 2019. Uh, moving to a three-year amendment is a, a significant improvement in that you don't have to uh, get familiar with all the changes each year, but with that comes a lot more uh, content to get f uh, familiar with. And we've just finished a similar session to what the HIA has done around the country. Uh, to over 3,000 people in all capital cities, and I'd like to congratulate the HIA for running these seminars. Because we, it's a big industry. You know, when you look at uh, residential builders, commercial, architects, engineers, building certifiers, we were a small agency. We're, uh, for those who don't know much about the ABCB, we're, a, uh, we're owned by the nine governments. We're not Commonwealth, we're not state and territory. We're a co-ag agency, small agency here in Canberra, and we're, just, we, we're not capable of getting out and doing the sort of uh, training that um, is being done here today across the country for, for the diverse nature of the industry. So I'd like to congratulate the HIA. This is exactly what we need the associations to be doing and help getting practitioners familiar with the changes to the code. Um, it, look, Simon's touched on uh, a few things that I was uh, going to uh, mention, but um, particularly in relation to readability, but it's probably um, it's just worth sort of uh, understanding you know, how the three-year amendment came around and uh, why we have now free access to the code and some of the other reforms that were attached to that, that money. So back in 2014, um, the government's recognised that it was, uh, uh, it was a bit ordinary to have to ask you to pay $400 to, um, for the privilege of knowing what uh, you have to comply with, so the code was made freely available. Uh, with that, though, came um, some other changes uh, that were acquired because of, of the doubling of the funding from governments, and that, the, the most notable is obviously the three-year amendment, but also uh, the improved readability of the NCC and the language content and structure, some of the things Simon just touched on. Quantifying the performance requirements is also a really um, big task for us. We want to get um, you know, me measurable targets in for the performance requirements, noting that the performance requirements are the only legal part of the code that you, that, you, know, that you have to comply with. But it, uh, access and understanding of the code, it's not just about making the code free and sort of, you know, plonking on the table and saying, you know, here you go, download it. It's also about um, improving the access understanding through digitisation, and I'll, I'll probably touch on that a little bit more given Simon's um, sort of uh, touched on the, uh, the readability um, overview. And with that, uh, with, those reformed in 2014, with those reformed in 2014 also came the requirement to produce a lot more uh, materials to help um, practitioners understand the code. Uh, we're not an RT, the ABCB is not a registered training organisation, but we can produce a lot of good content to help people understand um, and uh, use the code more competently. And that's uh, also now a, a, another common theme that's come out of the Shergold sure Weir re uh, review, which um, some people may be familiar with, but it's across the country the sort of quality of building issues um, are being looked at very closely by governments, and that sort of additional resource. For, uh, to help understand the, uh, the code and training is, a, is another key feature in, in those reports. Okay, so why readability? Well, again, again Simon has um, covered some of it, but um, 12,000 people is how many pe people used to buy the code before. That's now, uh, since that slide in the last few weeks, we're up to 210,000 people who are registered uh, to access the code. So when we had the 12,000 people, those people who used to buy the code were, were pretty familiar with the, with the code's content, arguably um, probably didn't need much help in understanding it. However, now that we've got this much larger cohort of users, uh, it, it is important that the code is, is consistent, it's logical and it's as easy to understand as possible. You know, improved readability uh, arguably helps provide clarity on, on understanding what you need to comply with. Um, this might shock you, but uh, there was independent reviews of the code and they determined that it's not a great read. Um, it's, when compared to other forms of legislation, um, it, it was it lost its, arguably, the, the, the Building Code of Australia initially and then uh, subsequently the, the National uh, Construction Code when plumbing was brought in, is arguably held up by um, governments and, uh, and uh, Independent reviews as a model of state and territory cooperation because there's no there's no federal legislation here. This is a this is a 
uh, sort of a leave the money on the fridge honesty system of cooperation between the states and territories and industry. And it, it works. It, it, you know, it's, it's over, over 20 years, independent reports have shown that there's about $1.1 billion worth of efficiencies generated each year through having a national, uh, nationally consistent approach to building regulation. There's another $1.1 billion that can be unlocked through the, some of these other reforms, like improved readability, like in, in quantifying the code. Uh, increasing digitisation, reducing state and territory ter uh, variations. So arguably the, the model has worked well, but to get it to the stage that it is now, over 20 years, it's been pulled apart by lots of different stakeholders. So to get agreement to each version of the code, the one's been through 19, Simon's, uh, where is he? Uh, where's Simon? Yeah, oh, there, just right there, right in front of me. And sat through three years of laborious committee meetings, um, and provided uh, comments on the changes that have gone through the code during that time. But in that room with Simon are 29 other people, all the states and territory governments, the, 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 the architects, engineers, building certifiers, everyone's having their little piece of it. And arguably what that meant has meant is that it's been pulled apart and we just kept adding things and the logical order of that has, has been lost. So we're doing a lot of work now to try and sort of get a little bit more consistency and, and logic into it. Uh, this is an example from uh, volume three, which I know is probably not going to mean a whole lot uh, to you guys, but it's, it's a, some of these features have been picked up um, in, in volumes one and two, but this is definitely what's coming for in the future. So and we've, you, we've fast-tracked a lot of the readability changes into volume three because it's a smaller, self, more self-contained um, volume of the NCC, but it's just getting... Uh, and all of this will seem like common sense, but it's the way, because of the, the legacy of 20 years of different owners, different authors and pulling it apart, this is not the way it, it currently is. So just uh, introduction to parts, more consistent heading styles, more meaningful performance requirement titles, different numbering systems, plain English requirements, all those sort of things that you'd expect in a modern con contemporary um, document. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of other changes in uh, the digitisation, uh, uh, sorry, in, the, in, the, in, the, in 2019, but the, the, the main ones were the general requirements and Simon in, in, during the day will go through a lot of those changes, so I won't go through those now and, and he has touched on them before, but, so what I'll spend a little bit more time on is on uh, the digitisation of the code. Um, so we've uh, done a lot of work now on improving the, uh, the, the, the uh, digital experience of, of the code and as part of the, the first part of that now is uh, the introduction of iconography for the codes when you're, when you're online. And uh, I know a lot of people here are probably uh, more familiar with the book and just a rough show of hands, who still uses the book? Yep, and PDF download to, to advisors. Yep, yep. If you're not using the online version of the code, um, you're going to be missing out in the future because this is where all the investment and all, all the bling is, is going. And it becomes particularly uh, more relevant if we can get access to Australian standards. So instead of carting the books and stands around, if you're on your device, just being able to seamlessly go from the NCC, drilling down into the standards, primary and secondary, if that, whilst free access to standards is, um, is not there yet, um, that, uh, if that does uh, unfold in the future, this, this seamless um, online version of the code is really where you want, what you want to be using. We've done some fairly, uh, again, standard improvements on what you'd expect for an online code. Uh, it's now sort of mobile friendly for all, all devices and, and browsers. But probably the, the biggest feature of new on online and why you may want to consider uh, starting to use it is that we produce a lot of materials to help um, practitioners understand uh, the code more fully. Whether they be YouTube clips, um, you know, handbooks, calculators, uh, advisory notes. There's a lot of really good material there. We, we often get good feedback that, that, it's, that, that you know, some people know about it, but a lot of people also say that it's buried away on our website. And so um, and there, there's a couple of, sort of handbooks down there to the right that are being released to, to support the uh, introduction of, uh, of NCC 2019. And unless you go, unless you know of them, or unless you're sort of you go looking for them on their website, you wouldn't know that they're there. However, with the new online version of the code, I'll, I'll come to the, the resources in a moment. Um, they'll be available more, a lot more easily. 
There's also a lot of work that's been done to improve the, uh, the navigation uh, of the online version of the code. So pretty much two to three clicks wherever you are on, on the online version of the code, you'll get to where you, you want, where you, where you want to be. Um, example there on the screen, well, it's going to be hard to read up the back, but that's filtered by the governing requirements, it's fire safety, filtered by the governing requirements, so you can really sort of hone down, specify in your search what you're looking for, and then the shaded areas will, will, will show exactly, exactly where that search result uh, uh, appears. Bookmarks, um, favourites, and it, the whole concept of where we're taking this is on a build your own version of the code. So there's, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of parts of the code that you're probably using 90% you know, of the time and a lot of the other stuff may be irrelevant. So this is a really good way to just uh, to bookmark exactly um, the parts of the code that are relevant to you. Uh, the, the shaded area on the right under resources, that's, this is the area one, uh, that I mentioned where all our uh, resources will be made available. So on the online, this is a new feature, on the, on the outline there under resources, any material that we have that's relevant to that section of the code will be there. So we, you know, want to know more, click here type principle. So in there, uh, might be too many volume one users here today, but all of the guide to volume one is there now in the relevant sections as you scroll down the code. So it's dynamically linked as you scroll through the code, that part will be there. Any handbook, any YouTube clip, calculator, any type of resource we produce will be now in the relevant part of the online version of the code. So again, this will help unearth all the materials that we produce. Uh, be, we're using modals now, so instead of in the old version of the code, you, online code, you used to click on one of the resources and it would sort of take you off to another window and you know, you'd sort of lose your spot. Pop-ups now for these modals uh, work, work, work pretty well. And uh, I'm just, just finishing off on that, again, the, the once access to standards um, uh, is, well, if access to standards is provided, that's when it is really is a game changer for the online experience. But just, so I guess, summing that up, if, you're not, if you haven't used the online version of the code, I'd suggest just have a look, because I think it is uh, a lot more, uh, a lot better than using the, the book, a lot more functionality, and it will help you understand the, the provisions that you uh, are obliged to comply with. Uh, another big uh, change that's coming, and this, I should emphasise that this is for 2022, so don't worry about it too much now, but just to give you some idea of what's in the pipeline. So Simon touched on the, the governing requirements changes, which again came out of that readability work. Well, the big, really big item that came out of the improved NCC readability work was getting a consistent structure um, across the code itself. So with each volume, there's a different there's a different sort of pathway to demonstrating compliance. So we're trying to get some consistency in that and also uh, for down the track, um, what COAG has said uh, under the NCC, they want us to introduce or to bring in gas and uh, electrical so you have all on-site building regulation under the one umbrella. So getting a consistent approach to it um, seems to make sense. But for 219, um, on the outside there, the bookends, that's been done now. So we've got a consistent, consistent set of governing requirements across all three volumes. On the right there, again, consistent schedules which apply to, to all of the NCC. That wasn't the case before, so they're all, all contained. And the, and the actual specific nature of the changes for volume two, Simon will drill into a bit later today. But what's left in the middle there, the meaty part, is uh, what we've got to tackle next, and that's getting a consistent approach to um, part B and to demonstrating compliance. And so it pretty much, it, it, the, for all three volumes, what people are trying to do is to demonstrate compliance. But we've got all this different signposting, all these different terms, cottage industry of different you know, names, terms, uh, and it, it, it doesn't aid uh, a consistent approach. So what we're trying to do is get a consistent way of demonstrating compliance. I won't go into the, I won't bore you with the detail now, but in, in, in essence, for volume two, what it will mean is terms like ACPs, ACMs, they'll probably disappear, it's just, it's, from our point of view, it's just all deemed to satisfy. There'll be some other changes, but that, that will probably be some of the, the, uh, the, the main things that you'll notice. So well, that's pretty much um, all I wanted to cover here today. Um, again, I'd just like to thank the HIA for um, running the, this, this um, session today and the ones they're doing across the country. Imperative that, uh, that, that the associations do this sort of work and um, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. It looks like a great program.